must pay homage to him. What's poppin' everyone, Odima here. Now 2019 has been a very good year for Samsung. We saw releases of various phones for various markets, from the top of the line S series to the bottom tier A series. Samsung has just been moving very, very well into the market. And now, just two days ago, Samsung released their latest smartphone, another addition to the S series, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. Now, if you didn't know about the Samsung Galaxy S10, which was released earlier this year, that was a very, very good phone, probably hyped as one of the best phones of 2019. But now this Note 10 has come out and I'm sure some people are wondering what makes the Note different from the S. Now, the Note series has always been known to be a power user's phone so does that still hold up here let's find out now the three most important things that i actually looked into when you're comparing these three phones are specs design and the cameras so i'll dive into them one by one now let's start off with the design now most Samsung Galaxy S phones and the Note series phones sometimes are very very similar but then they have some unique differences in them now the similarities between the Note 10 and the S10 oh yes and please note any difference or similarity that I place out in this video applies to both the S10 and S10 Plus or Note 10 and Note 10 Plus unless I say otherwise with that out of the way let's continue now both phones have dynamic AMOLED displays they have glass on the front and back and they have their hole punch display now we'll be talking about the difference between their hole punches in a little bit both of them have the ultrasonic fingerprint reader which is that very new type of fingerprint reader that uses sound waves to read your fingerprint instead of light i have a video about that in the show notes up there now both phones also have curved displays triple camera arrays a 1440 by 3040p display now there's an exception to the note 10 which has a 1080 by 2280p display this is only for the regular note 10 not the note 10 plus now both phones are hdr 10 plus compliant have ip68 water and dust resistance and have a 60 hertz display now this is a deal breaker for some people who have wanted to taste the smoothness of the 90 hertz or 120 hertz of the asus rock phone but hey if it ain't broke don't fix it and they both have stereo speakers this has got to be the best feature for me stereo speakers i mean they managed to make their phone look like it's all screen but they are still able to make sure that even when you're listening to content the speakers or rather the sound that you get from the phone is still quite good yes most of the sound comes from the bottom firing speaker but then at least even if you do mistakenly cover it with a finger you won't be missing out on everything that's going on in the phone now moving to the differences the samsung galaxy s10 plus has a 6.4 inch curved display with a 522 ppi and an 89 percent screen to body ratio while the note 10 plus has a 6.8 inch curved display with a 498 ppi and a 91 percent screen to body ratio now the curve on the note 10 is also less pronounced 
like that of the S10 too. It's almost flat, but it's not flat at the same time. It's very good to look at. Many people have said that they don't like the curved display because it adds no real value to the phone. It's just a design thing. I have not used these phones, so I can't really say for sure. But then I know that I like the look. But then from what I've heard about um, accidental screen touches from the edge display and other problems like screen bleed, this may be a deal breaker for some people, but I doubt to be a deal breaker to everyone. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the Note 10 regular have different displays the s10 has a 6.1 inch curved display with a screen to body ratio of 88.3 and the note 10 has a 6.3 inch display which is also curved with a 90 percent screen to body ratio all of them have this curved screen so you needn't worry and because samsung is known to release one of the best screens in the smartphone industry you needn't worry about um viewing your content outdoors or in direct sunlight now the s10 plus and the note 10 plus both are somewhat heavy phones but s10 plus weighs about 175 grams as opposed to the 196 grams on the note 10 plus the only exception to this is the s10 with the ceramic back now that one weighs about 198 grams so do bear that in mind when you're going into the market now the power and volume button arrangement on the note 10 and the s10 changed this year the s10 had the power and volume buttons on the right and some people complain about the power button actually being a bit too high up but now in the note 10 the volume button and the power button are actually both on the left hand side of the phone there is no bixby button and that's because the power button is actually the bixby button this is remarkable if you want you can launch other apps or you can just set it back to actually powering off your phone because if you leave the power button to be used as a bixby button you will not be able to turn off your phone unless you use some other alternative method to actually turn it off now on the back of the phones we have this new gradient color called aura glow just very very trippy color i'm not very fond of the color it looks like a horror show from the back well at least that's for me the different colors the way it changes in the light it's annoying to me sometimes but it's actually very very good to look at while the s10 just has a somewhat clean color now the ultrasonic fingerprint reader also which is beneath the screen is faster on the note 10 than the s10 uh, well at least this was expected and then now the camera arrangement on the note series and the s series has always been what people use to differentiate which is which but now this year it's got a bit flipped around now previous notes would have their cameras arranged horizontally while the s phones would be vertically arranged this year the note series phone is being arranged vertically while the s10 had the horizontal layout no big deal as long as my cameras actually do the work that they're supposed to do and then of course the most annoying feature for some people the headphone jack which is now missing so that's all about the display let me know what you think in the comment section about the displays are they good are you satisfied with the compromises or rather the differences between these two phones and which one would you get if you were to consider display in the specs department we have the snapdragon 855 as long as the phone is shipping to the global market and an adreno 640 gpu which means that um 
most Android games, but all Android games will run with no issues at all. There's UFS 3.0 storage, which means that the read-write storage speeds of this phone are extremely fast. So transferring files, copying files, updating files, that will just be a breeze for you. Both phones are maxed out at 12 gigs of RAM. There is no dedicated SD card slot, which means you're going to be sacrificing your second SIM card if you want to expand your storage. And then speaking about expandable storage, both phones actually allow you to expand up to a terabyte. I mean, what's now the point of having a laptop if your phone can actually go up to a terabyte? I don't really know. Now let's talk differences. Now the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 ships with a slightly different chip in some regions. It ships with an Exynos 9825, which is also a 7 nanometer process chip as the 855, but then it's different. I don't know why they do that, but it's for them to know and us to probably never find out. And then as for the S10, it's somewhat a similar case, but then it's an Exynos 9820 chip, which is actually an eight nanometer process chip. So it's a bit slower than that of the Note 10. But then of course, this doesn't apply to every market. I think it applies to the Korean market, maybe. I'm not very, very sure. Now the regular, Note 10 does not have expandable storage and it also maxes out at about 256 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM as opposed to 512 on the bigger brother and also on the S10 phones. Well, for someone like me who likes my specs, 256 gigs, I think that's even more than enough for me and then you tell me to get 512 gigabytes i am fine the chipset is fine the storage is good i have no issues with them whatsoever now let's talk about the cameras for those people who actually love their cameras and only pick their phones because of the camera quality now samsung has stuck with 12 megapixels on their main cameras on both these phones. I don't actually know why, but then I've always said that having a high megapixel count doesn't matter if your image processing is going to be very, very bad. So I'm fine with them having a 12 megapixel camera, but I think having a 48 megapixel camera with their color science and image processing it may actually look very very stunning but then we can't say for sure now their main camera is a 12 megapixel camera like i said before and it has a variable aperture of about 1.5 i can then switch to 2.4 depending on the conditions allowed f1.5 is normally for um dark environments that's when the lens opens very very wide and then f2.4 is for normal daylight shots and the main camera also has ois there's a telephoto lens which is also a 12 megapixel one that allows you to go for two times optical zoom so no lossless so no loss in quality as your zoom well at least that's just two times as opposed to five or ten on the oppo reno and also this telephoto lens has OIS and there is a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera on the two phones with an f aperture of 2.2 and there is no OIS on this camera. I don't actually know why, well, they know best. And then on the selfie camera, there is a 10 megapixel shooter. And like I said before, it is better to have a lower megapixel count than to actually have a high megapixel count but then bad image processing because why would you have a phone with 32 megapixels but then your color science is off your image processing is too bad you are sharpening your images i just don't get that 
Now these cameras record 2160p video at both 30 and 60 fps and 1080p 240 frames per second slow motion video and then 720p 960 frames super slow motion video i don't know whether the ois applies here i think it actually should so so video makers photographers videographers vloggers i don't think you have any issues at all with this camera because these cameras can serve you very very well as for um image samples and video samples you have to watch their reviews on other channels i don't have these phones so i can't really give you my verdict on them now let's talk about the differences in the camera department the new 10 main camera is slightly wider than the s10 camera it's a very very small difference i believe 27 as opposed to 28 millimeters it's not a very very big deal i don't even think you'll see it in um, everyday scenarios but then it's there if you need it the note 10 telephoto lens actually has an f aperture of 2.1 now this is a regular note 10 while the regular s10 has an aperture of 2.4 in its telephoto lens the regular s10 also does not have video stabilization when it's recording 2160p 60 frames per second video but other settings below this actually have stabilization and this is only applicant to the s10 the s10 plus i believe does have the stabilization well if you made it this far into the video thanks for watching please do subscribe to get more content like this leave a like and a comment below i'll be listening i'll be in the comment sections trying to answer any questions at all you have and then do let me know if you want me to improve anything in my videos i know the audio can be a bit bad at times i'm still trying to work on that i will be done with it probably before september or so i'm not very very sure the microphones that i ordered are still on the way that's been it thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace